Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, The Star in Your Child. If you're looking for sustainable results from your special buddies, our gifted child, this channel is for you to get all the encouragement and tips. You are not alone, along with your million others. We together will rock it. So today's topic is genetic counseling. As you all know that I have begun a series on pre-pregnancy, pregnancy and post-pregnancy, everything related to that and Preventive measures to have a healthy baby is what we are focusing on. During the pre-pregnancy video, I had mentioned on genetic counseling and to clear the air around this is with us Dr. Shruti Bajaj, a physician expert, a pediatrician and a clinical geneticist practicing in Mumbai, Malad and the western suburbs. In addition to this, she is a founder and a scientific advisor to a parent support group called Pehel for individuals with Down syndrome. So let's get started and meet her up and know more about genetic counseling. Hello ma'am, it's a privilege and honor to hi, have you. Hi, hi, hi Bhakti. So uh, let's get straight to the questions. Please let us know what is genetic counseling. See, genetic counseling is basically a process through which knowledge is shared by a trained professional about the genetic aspects of an illness. And this knowledge is shared with those who have a hereditary disorder okay. or are at an increased risk of having it or passing it to their next generation. So what should be the red flags or the alerts that would uh, make us go for the genetic counseling? So see, genetic counseling is not meant for everyone. Um, by and large, if I was to say there is this easy mnemonic which is given by American Association of Family Physicians is called as a screen mnemonic. Okay. So SC stands for some concerns, which means do you have some concerns in your family about any family relative, which may be first degree or second degree, having a particular illness. For example, male relatives having a lot of bleeding problems. Okay. Um, or for instance, a relative having mental retardation, seizures, okay. birth defects. So one, is there any concern, some concern? Okay. The next part is the R part of the mnemonic reproduction. So do you have any reproductive problems okay. in terms of infertility, miscarriages, okay. previous abnormal or an anomalous baby? Our third part of the mnemonic is E. So any history of early death, disability or any chronic illness running in the family. Uh, fourth is the ethnicity. So as we know that worldwide as well as in India, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you see clustering of diseases in certain ethnicities. Mm -hmm. For example, we know in central Maharashtra, and uh, there are certain tribes which are more predisposed to sickle cell anemia. Mm -hmm. Then there are certain communities which are more predisposed to thalassemia. So ethnicity also makes it important. Okay. And the last part of the mnemonic is N, that is non-genetic conditions. Okay. So are you at a risk or do you have a um, history of say smoking or alcohol, which could result in uh, problems in okay. the child or the baby department. Okay. Yeah. So when uh, we have um, these uh, Right, yeah, yeah. Then we need to have, go in for yes. genetic counseling. Uh, I would say that at least it's better you speak to your primary physician. It could be your pediatrician or your gynac who could then see through and see whether you actually fit into go to a counselor or of course you can directly meet a geneticist uh, for genetic counseling. So not all need to go through this? No, there has to be at least some red flag there. Unless it's not, then it's not, uh, it's not no a pill that everyone has to take in basically. Even if it's in the first cousins? Absolutely. So if you feel that there is a family history, say even of cancers, mental okay. retardation, yeah, even that can be genetic. So even okay. if it's a first cousin thing, at least bring it out with your doctor or your physician and then let him judge and see if, and understand as to whether you are actually at a risk of having a genetic disorder. So okay. there are certain times where it could be your say mama, what we say, a maternal uncle okay. or your Masi's son who is having a particular disease. Okay. They're called as X-linked recessive disorders and being a girl, you could be transmitting that disease to your male child. Okay. So don't discard a history which is beyond your immediate family members. Okay. If you have anything significant, even in terms of your cousins or relatives, do bring it up uh, yes. to your physician, to your gynec or you know, your pediatrician. So this has to be in mind before we plan pregnancy? Ideally, yes, all these things are best sorted out before you 
embark on your pregnancy. But even if you have started with your pregnancy, it's never too late to at least. Who are not uh, considering genetic counseling? Uh, we do this dual marker and double marker test. It's a normal uh, procedure during pregnancy. Can you please elaborate on uh, these tests? So, you see, dual marker and quadruple marker. These are tests which are called in medical languages aneuploidy screening tools. Okay. Basically, aneuploidy is a type of a numerical error in our genetic makeup. But what we need to understand that dual marker and quadruple marker are just screening technologies. They are not diagnostic modalities. Secondly, they help you to pick up only three of the common aneuploidies. It's not that a dual marker or a quadruple marker is an insurance stamp. Okay. against all genetic disorders. Okay. So if you are dual marker and, and or quadruple marker screen negative, it means you have a less risk of having a child with one of these three amyploidies that is Down syndrome, okay. uh, Edward syndrome or Patau syndrome, that's trisomy 21, 18 or 13. Okay. So this is what, because these three are relatively common aneuploidies. Okay. So they, there is a common test which is devised where the mother's blood is withdrawn mm. and these serum markers are then checked. So they are basically chemicals which are checked in the mother okay. and if they are very high or very low, they signify a risk of, they could signify a risk of having one of these three disorders. What you need to know that if you're screen positive, okay. it still does not mean that you have an abnormal child, you have to then go for a confirmatory testing okay. in the form of amniocentesis, okay. which is a procedure through which the fluid around the baby is drawn out okay. uh, by sono under sonography guidance. And what week would this be done? This would be somewhere around 16 weeks of 16 gestation. Weeks. Yeah. Okay. So you need to understand even if you're screen positive, you need to undergo confirmation test. Okay. And if you're screen negative, okay. there are very less chances that you will have any of these three disorders. Okay. But it is not a 100% guarantee that there will be never a Down syndrome or an Edward or a Patau. Okay. Also, it is not a guarantee against the rest of the genetic disorders. Okay. So this is a common misconception or a myth where parents are often alarmed when they have a child who is born with a genetic disorder. And they, often, and they often first come and ask, even, okay, we did the dual marker, quadruple right. marker, we did the sonography. Because sonography, dual marker, quadruple marker, these are all screening methods. Method. Even sonography will pick up major anomalies in a part of the anomaly. You'll always read that disclaimer. Right. It is not a thing where all anomalies can be detected. Right. So you have to sometimes wait for the child to be born and the rest of the features to evolve to then know whether the child is actually having some genetic disorder or not. Oh. Yeah. So uh, the stem cell therapy that has been in a height these uh, days? I think less or said the better. Uh, I'll just say that evidence-based medicine does not support the role of stem cell therapy in autism or developmental delay as of now. Okay. As and when we have more evidence and literature on it, there will be firm guidelines or statements. And okay. until that time, I would say there is no role. The rest, I think, is for the parents yes. to decide. Yeah. So even storing the stem cell no, there's no role. Uh, see, storing of stem cell is a completely different thing. If you're storing it with the hope of using it for autism, I would say there's no use. Okay. But if there are some very few um, defined medical conditions for which stem cell may be stored, most of them are hematological okay. or oncological. There's a history of a hemat or a blood-related disorder. Okay. So there are few indications. I'm not saying stem cell banking is not indicated at all. But uh, with the hope that it's going to cure my child's autism, as of now, science doesn't have an answer for that. Yeah. Okay. And what would be the benefits of uh, genetic diagnosis? How will uh, so you mean that if a child is because these are very expensive tests? Yeah. yeah. So uh, so you mean that why why pursue a genetic diagnosis at all in the first place? Yes. Yeah. So see, uh, you know, for a long time in our country. Uh, genetic diagnosis was always about the next child. The doctor, if I get to know my first child has got a genetic disorder, right. I may be able to prevent it in the next child. Right. So, of course, that is one uh, benefit or one advantage which always stays. But I would want to say that genetics has traveled a long way beyond just predicting the risk of recurrence in the next child. Okay. So, I look at it this way. If you know, uh, I give a simple example. You walk into 
or doctor's OPD saying you have fever. Huh. Now, whether your fever is because of malaria, dengue, or tuberculosis, your treatment is going to differ, your rest of your investigations will differ, and your prognosis will differ. In the same way, when a child walks in with a, say, autism or, say, developmental delay, hmm. what is the cause of that developmental delay? What is the genetic root? First of all, is it even genetic? Is it non genetic? Right. Genetic? If it is genetic, what disorder am I looking at? Does that disorder have other manifestations which I need to be worried as a doctor? Do I need to tell the parents to keep a watch or a surveillance on other systemic manifestations? Um, of course, there are times when there is nothing, there's no cure, no surveillance. At, that, at those times, it helps in terms of prognostication and closure okay. for the families. Okay. Another myth we often hear, I would say, you know, doctor, there's of course, there's never any treatment for any genetic disorder. Why should I even pursue Correct. it? So that, again, I would say that uh, fortunately, we are in a time where every year, more and more disorders are getting added to the list of treatable Okay. genetic disorders. Um, there are almost more than 110 uh, disorders, you know, causes of mental okay. retardation, which now have treatment. Now talking only about mental retardation. And then there are other groups of disorders, of course, hematological, like thalassemia. Okay. Then there are liver related disorders like Wilson disease. Uh, there is now, uh, you know, even in terms of inborn errors of metabolism, okay. the list is actually, we can have a complete okay. different talk I on see. Um, yes. The list of disorders which are now amenable to treatment. Okay. So it's no longer that uh, genetic disorders can never be treated. In fact, those which can be treated, uh, it's really heartening to see their progress and you know how well they can do in life. Okay. So I would say to not give up hope. I think that's one of your main um, uh, yes. agenda. Right. Uh, so I think we all work on the same path. That yes, I'm not saying that a lot of or all genetic disorders have uh, treatment, the number is still few, okay. but either for treatment or for support and surveillance, if not anything for prognostication, closure, and lastly for risk of recurrence in the next pregnancy, okay. these are broadly the benefits which a family can attain by getting a genetic diagnosis. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if anybody is considering genetic counselling or um, wanting to know more about this, Please feel free to contact Dr. Shruti Bajaj. I would be Bajaj. more than happy to help you all, yeah. yeah. So. She's extremely friendly and will definitely make sure that you have got what she wants. I think you're doing a great job too, Bhakti. I think you need Thank to Thank you so much. Her. Thank you it's so really much. It's really nice interacting with you and I would look forward to such sessions in future. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Bhakti. Bye. It was nice to meet you. Okay.